Okay, we're back up. Um, I tried changing my um, location I'm streaming to, so let's see if that helps. I'm now not going to Virginia. Fucking Virginia. It's gotta be your fault. Okay, so let's hope uh, Chicago is better than Virginia. Is it possible to reset specs slash skill points? Yes. yes. Yes, it is. And attributes. Or else, can snares be broken out of? Only through cleanses and dispels. Any way, and there's no other way to get out of them. So they're very strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can roll out of roots, but not snares. Yep, snares correct. Snares are very annoying. Do I know when the next weekend beta is going to be next weekend? I'm just going to go ahead and call it. It's happening. 100%. Done. Is there a known close combat sorcerer build? Yes. Um, check Tamriel Foundry. Sorcerer Theory Crafting. It's called the Reaver build. Sorcerer Reaver build. It is very good. Um, Atropos made the post. It's a very, very good post. So you can go there and find out all about it. Can I explain the difference between the statuses and mobilized versus storm versus stun versus lockdown versus snare and how does CC immunity work exactly? Okay, that's a tough one, but I can do it. Um, immobilize is root. You simply can't move your feet. You're stuck in spot, but you can cast spells you can, and you can dodge roll out of it. Um, disorient is a mez. Damage will break it, but you can't make any action whatsoever while disoriented until you, you're hit with it. But you can CC break it for half your stamina and you're immune for five seconds afterwards. Stun is the same as Disorient, except for it doesn't break on damage, but you can still break out of it with your left and right click. Knockdown is the same as Stun, more or less. Um, snare is you move slower by percentage, your movement speed is slower, and you can't break out of it, you can't dodge roll out of it, you can only dispel it, it's a debuff. And how does CC immunity work exactly? Anytime you're hard CC'd, which is your disorients, stuns, and knockdowns, you're immune afterwards for five seconds. And if you CC break, you're immune for five seconds. There you go. Wait, you're immune after a normal knock? Uh, any CC? Yes. Because I can definitely spam binding javelin on people. Uh, you shouldn't be able to. It should make them immune for a few seconds after they get back up. Is Grand Healing good enough to fill a healer role in a low or mid-level dungeon, or do you need to bring Regeneration along as well? I would say bring Regeneration along, along as well, but Grand Healing could do it. It would maybe get dicey at times. I would say take Regeneration, a, though. A Templar with uh, money and Grand uh, Healing would probably be your best, too, if you're only looking for two abilities early on. Yeah, if you're looking for a single ability with healing, though, Lingering Ritual may be able to solo heal a dungeon by itself. Maybe. But that would be tough in the mid-levels. Yeah, it's badass. Alex, is there a soft cap on how much block can reduce? No. But there's only so many abilities. So you can only get to like 70% or something. Oh, CC, so what about fear? Fear is... Un uh, it doesn't break on damage. It's just like a stun, except for you're moving away. You're moving in a direction for like however many seconds. You're actually just running away. So it's like fear in World of Warcraft, except for it doesn't break on any damage. And it's usually much shorter duration. And you run in a straight in a straight line away from the caster, apparently, as yep. opposed to at random, yep. like in WoW. Yeah, straight line away. And it can be broken out like a stun, yes. Uh, someone says something. Let's see if I can find. Oh, health only gives 15 instead of 20. That is confirmed. I'll confirm that. 100% confirmed. I think, though, they're going to make armor have 15 or have 1.5 times more health, too, in order to counter that. So you'll have the same amount of total HP. But, yes, um, I think they're making it to where that 49 points in health isn't the obvious choice, that you can just go whatever you want to go. And I think they'll accomplish that with upping the value on armor a bit. I'm going to refresh my stream real quick on my side so I just can't see the chat for a second. So pick you out a question or two, sorry. Hmm. 
How about you read me a question and then I'll do it. I, I don't have chat. Damn it! I actually don't see any questions. Yeah, I said it could work, but get the hot as well because you may want it. Um, after someone uses a CC break and is immune or uses immobile, can morphed encased still apply snare? Um, I don't think so because they would never get encased. They would never get the encased for it to end. How much does Red Diamond heal at max level? Uh, I don't know. No one knows. But the uh, the Red Guard racial that does the same thing, isn't that for like 50 or something? Yeah, so it's probably, we're guessing, in the 50 range. Sorry, are you going Which to be is... a Boplar at launch? What made you decide on your final character build choice? Uh, yes, I will be playing a Tebow. And... Uh... What made me decide on it? I guess I, I, I just enjoyed it when I tried it. I didn't expect it at all. Uh, a lot of people going in aren't enthused with bow play, and they, they've improved it over time. Part of it was my first experience with bows was really not positive, but uh, I like that you can crit without, I mean, get, you know, the sneak attack bonus without having to get anywhere near somebody. Uh, uh, it adds mobility to the Templar. It adds a little bit of single target burst uh, through that, uh, the, the sneak attack, and it... Uh, the big thing is when you're at range like that, it, it's really easy to use healing ritual on the people around you, uh, it, it, to really just keep the group up in PvP with that that one heal spell. So, yes, that that's that's me for Blowpar. It pretty much perfectly fits how I want to play. Okay, um, so we're gonna be cutting this off pretty soon. I'm gonna answer a few more questions. Sorry, I might do a couple as well. Um, before we do those last few questions, though, last reminder to please click the follow button down there down there I think yeah down there and um, follow my stream to see the next time when I come on it'll probably be in the next day or so um, I don't have a set schedule yet but it's a good idea to follow me to get more Q&A's and more footage hopefully next time and all that good stuff it helps a lot when you click follow but I've almost got Magnum unlocked then we'll find out if I like it or not and the person in here with me is Asari. His Twitter is Sir Asari. You should follow it to hear cool things about games and shit. Especially ESO. And... I think that's about it. Yep, I, I uh... Yeah, I post things that aren't funny that I think are funny. Uh, and, uh, lots of MMO stuff. I'm pretty much following, uh... I'd say... World of Darkness, uh, it, although there's no news for that. ESO primarily, EQ Next. Uh, that's that's kind of the stuff you can expect to see out of me. Okay, but back to the question. Oh, also Benefactor is in here. He does not stream, so following him is probably not going to get you anything. But he does he does get happy when he gets lots of Twitch followers. So if you want to just do that, you can. Um, you can see um, Benefactor and talk to him and all that good stuff on the Tamriel Foundry as well as Asari and I. Um, we all encourage you to use our new theory crafting forums, class forums, and come up with good builds, but don't half-ass it because we will delete your shit in a second. Yeah, do, do yeah, do read the uh, the, the forum rules there. It, it'll show it to you ab above your posting box. We are trying to keep that as a uh, organized and useful reference tool for people. So uh, if you're asking a question, you know, do it somewhere else. Uh, yeah, definitely don't half-ass it. Yeah, if you have a lot of questions, you're not sure what kind of build you would make, check someone else's build and sort of ask questions about their build in that thread. Or, or the class, the, you know, the original class forums as well, that's not yeah, the that too. Templar form specifically or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, the Nightblade Impressions article I'm working on right now, so hopefully sometime this week. Yeah, Benefactor needs to get on that shit. Write that article, Benny. Yeah, if you don't write one, I'm going to write one, and then ain't nobody going to play an iPlay. <laughs> oh, that's the truth. Okay, uh, what's the best innates to research on weapons and on armor? Um, the first thing I would probably go for is uh, attack speed and crit damage on weapons, because I think that, or crit chance on weapons, I think that would be the most popular. And then on armor, I would go with divines, it's going to be probably the most popular. Put on my traits, I assume. What site is the build stuff on? It's yes, it's on Tamriel Foundry. It's uh, under game mechanics. There is each class for them. We are incredibly specific and very touchy on what we allow to be posted in there, so please read the rules. 
or else we'll delete your shit and possibly give you an infraction because it's sorry loves doing that yes yes i do who is playing uh, this is me playing this is uh recording though What's the best bow build? That's a really, really hard question. That would have like 15 answers, and they'd all be different for different people. How much damage does the Shadow Munda Stone add? I think it's like... Lost. No, great. Team speak for crashed again. Um, The Shadow is the crit damage one, so I think it's like 7% crit damage or something. It's not huge, but it's helpful. Is the stream still up? Yeah, stream's still up, just team speak got it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, somebody asked, are we going to be forum Nazis? And the answer is yes. We, uh, you know, we want the site to be a useful resource for people. Uh, it's, if you're going in there and there's a whole bunch of illegible posts uh, w with no useful information in it and just, use, you know, completely useless garbage, that's not helpful for anybody. So for the theory crafting forum specifically, we're really cracking down, you know, make it readable, uh, you know, prove that you've put some thought into it. Yeah, and that's only on the crafting section. Feel free to, you know, make the less formal, more, you know, average posts on other parts of the forums. But, you know, we're, we're going to be really tough even on formatting when it comes to our class discussion threads. So be wary of that. Thank you for coming by, Danny. Um, best DPS class other than not blade. Um, Sork, Sork. Right? yeah, I'd say Sork overall DPS Sork. But they're all pretty good. Yeah, I, they're those all two are good. probably going to be the, the 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 furthest ahead. After that, I don't know. Uh, Templar and Dragonite are probably in pretty pretty similar places. Um, what do you do with the fish you've caught in game? Um, I think you can sell them for money. Yeah, and I you've think. Them. Yeah. And I think you might be able to catch fish that give buffs directly, but I'm not sure on that. Like food buffs directly from I, the fish. I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, but maybe I'm crazy. CC DPS, Dragonite or Templar, that's Dragonite. That's all Dragonite. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Well, um, Sork would also be good in that category, but if you're looking at only those two, I would say Dragonite, yeah. And Sork would be different, too. I, I think Dragonite kind of more broadly fits what people think of when you're going for that. Yeah. Is fishing worthwhile? That's a good question. Um, I haven't done no. it. I mean, if you're in a, 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 you know, a completionist or achievement whore, or you really enjoy, like, mindless things like that, sure. It, you know, it's a, it's a fun little mini game, is what it is. It's not anything else. Um, does anyone know what the future of ESO is in regards of expansions? I can say that they have a plan for lots and lots of years of content. I don't know what it is, but there's plenty of room for it. Um, they're not going to go the route of Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is a free-to-play game, and that's why you get their shit content. They come out with a new yeah, patch, and it's I, uh, I three quests. I with ESO, you're going to be seeing uh, you know, veteran crap. Veteran cap, uh, yeah. Veteran cap raises uh, and continued gear progression as associated with that, with kind of what you would expect uh, for a usual MMO. Yeah, and you're gonna see like near monthly big patches, like entire zones being added with full of content and you know full of you know adventure zones or raids or something of that magnitude almost monthly. So expect lots of shit coming. Will the money drop be greater in the final game than it is in beta? No. Uh, money is not easy to come by, but I have a feeling that certain people will get much better at making money because they will um, sell things to other players. You know, so, and, and also, a, a lot of people, uh, it seems, that played like the weekend beta don't understand that money drops go up as you uh, level up and, and yes. progress further into the game. So. You know, I, I saw a lot of beta posts made by, uh, I guess, really stupid people where they're like, it's going to take me three years to get them out at this rate. And it's like, you're you're counting level one values here. Are, are you stupid? Yeah. I, I really don't understand how that they made it to the post button without that occurring to them. 
Yeah, the quests at like level 50 and veteran ranks can give you upwards of like 500 to 1,000 gold for like a big quest. Whereas at low level you get like 10 or something. So there's a big difference in the amount of gold you can make. Do I see them buffing Nightblade for launch because of community feedback? No. Um, no, they just possibly. nerfed them so hard. Possibly because they just nerfed them, but maybe. I don't know, there's, there's a lot can go happen there. You know, somebody just asked if there are other good sources of information on Twitter. Uh, I'd say at that road guy, he's the host of TisaCast. He uses it pretty actively. Uh, at Tamriel Foundry is us, obviously. But I mostly manage that, so if you're following me, you're probably going to see it. Uh, and, and I guess those would be the, the big ones I'd follow, besides the obvious things like the official site. Um, I would worry less on Twitter and more on Twitch. You're going to get a lot more following ER members and other big... Twitch streamers than you are anything else. Uh, that's, a, that's a completely different form of content, though. Twitter yeah, gives you quick things, articles. Uh, most people are going to link Twitch streams in Twitter. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of that, I should have made you link my Twitch stream in the TF Twitter. I already did. Oh, you did? Awesome. When you get down to 20 FPS, would you say it's choppy and hard to play like in other games? Or is it still somewhat... Eh, it's still somewhat fine. 20 FPS, you're okay. Yeah, yeah I, much lower I than that. You have trouble. Like 20 something, uh, and it, it's not too noticeable. I'm not sure why it seems smoother to me. It's I'll, not. I'll be my it's not eventually. FPS style where if you're not running 80 FPS, you suck. Um, because of the like soft locking and stuff, you can. It's much more manageable. That was really confusing, Erlex. Don't use the. Don't use FPS to mean two different things. Yeah, sorry. The acronyms of that caliber flow out of my mouth without even realizing what I'm saying. Sort of like dots and hots. If someone was to ask me what that meant, I would have to stop and think for a second. And I'd yeah. also think they were stupid. Like, why, hey, why don't you know that? asking about Nightblade nerfs. Nightblades have always had really good single target damage and solo, you know, 1v1 capability. Uh, their problem's always been that they bring nothing to a group. But uh, they're... Uh, a lot of their single target and solo ability stuff was too good and deserved a nerf, but uh, I, I think they deserved to be have their group uh, capability buffed if you're going to bring them more in line with the other classes in terms of single target. Uh, and they're still the best for those things. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. The nerfs weren't, like, huge by any means. They just hurt certain things a little bit. Like, Benefactor is still going to beat people's ass one-on-one, -on -one, most cases. But he's not going to be able to do it with as many varying builds and things like that. So, yeah, they were nerfed, but they weren't, like, broken at the thing they're good at. They're still good at what they were good at before. They're just still bad at what they were at, bad at before. I still think, though, that Nightblades are more underrated than people think. I think, I think we're just a... A, a release of the game away from seeing a lot of Knot Blades being played and someone figuring out some good builds that are really, really strong. You know, I, I also think it's it's because we play in organized groups all of the time. If you're a solo player or the people you play with are terrible, uh, uh, mileage out of a Knot Blade. You're not going to... It's it's not in your face bad. When you're, when you're playing, when you're probably not going to notice it, especially if you don't have experience with... Uh, other classes and how they play in a group. Other than Dragon Knights, everybody feels bad in your Dragon Knights. Alright, uh, that's very similar to how Dayok was. Stealthers didn't bring anything to the group, but if you wanted to solo, they were pretty decent. Yeah, that's sort of how it comes out, but I think they're better at soloing now than they were in Dayok, and I think they're better in groups than they were in Dayok, because they were really, really bad in groups in Dayok, but now they're they're, they're just not great. They, they can still be useful. 
Or it says the addition of collision detection improved the PvE a lot. I've heard nothing but good things about the feel of combat since that change. So yeah, I think it was a very, very good, good change. But I worry what it did to the adventure zones that are currently in the works and what it did to veteran dungeons, because I haven't had a chance to do those yet. So I'm 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 cautiously optimistic. Uh, I'm worried about what it did to the collision, or what it did to the higher end stuff. It may not mean anything, but there's a lot of mobs that come charging in at you in a lot of group encounters, and that could be very frustrating when you can't get past things, but there is always dodge roll, so maybe that'll make dodge roll more useful. So, cautiously optimistic, but I think good so far. Yeah, How it takes... They, they, they did a little bit more to improve melee in this game as well. There's, uh, I think because of the new physics engine that came with the, uh, the, the, uh, the collision detection in general, when you're, like, swinging your sword, you'll see it hang a bit right when you make connection, uh, and the animation will pause. There's more blood effects. Uh, there's a bit more screen shake. It, it feels pretty good. Blood. There's good blood now. There is a video I made for our guildies a while back, so it's named something stupid. I just now made it like able to be watched by other people. Um, it's it's a kind of a little funny video that I threw together real quick playing with Vegas, but I'm gonna play it here, and I encourage anyone who wants to see some more content like it. You're not gonna get by any means. You're not gonna get daily or weekly content on my YouTube, but. You will get the occasional big PvP video later, like in Adventure Zone bosses and that kind of stuff on it. So if you want to subscribe to it, so when you see that, go ahead. But don't expect things daily. Um, God, also, I'm gonna. Shameless plugs, Alex. Oh, shame! Hey, my channel, my plugs. <laughs> um, uh, I'm also gonna show the video before we go. So this is pretty much the end of the stream. I'll maybe answer one or two questions after the video, and it's very loud, and there's lots of music and shit with it. So. Yeah. I'm not completely blown away by Magnum right now. Although I have a blazing spear on my bar. Yeah, so here's the video. This is totally a rogue ram running around a keep for no reason. I'm right here, I'm just showing that we have bowling oil pouring at the uh, gate of this place. And then I'm going to kind of go around and get ready for them to come in. Is ram racing a thing? Um, um, no, but it could be. It's pretty funny. You know, I, I, I will say that I, as far as me not streaming and writing things go, I did do a really comprehensive view of overview review type thing of uh, ESO. It's 9,000 words long, so don't go into it expecting a quick read, but uh, it, I definitely cover everything. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from a shocking amount of people that actually did read it. So uh, if you want to, I, I, I've tried, I just linked it. I, uh, I think I was fairly critical of the game, but like I said in the beginning, I like the game. That's why I write for a fan site for it, so don't expect me to be completely trashing it, but I, I highlighted areas that could use improvement.
Yes, music was loud. Sorry, I told you it was gonna be loud. I warned everyone. What graphics card do I have here? I have a GTX 770, but if it looks laggy at points, it's because I slowed the video down and I was recording, and it just looks bad. It's not actually that bad. But there you go. There was the video. Uh... Okay, so... It may not be happy news to hear, but that is the end of our our stream. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed. Um, if I could get some more people, it would be awesome, because I'm about to hit 500, and that would be pretty epic. But if not, maybe next time. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out, and make sure to check out all of his sorry stuff on the Tamil Foundry. He writes lots of cool stuff, and... Lots of cool stuff, yeah. Lots and lots of stuff. You know, and on the <laughs> subject of what we were talking about, I uh, I have been trying out Magnum. I went and leveled it up while we were streaming, and uh, that's definitely an interesting choice over Binding Javelin. Whoever we uh, whoever asked that question earlier, uh, I I'm gonna give that some further looking. I think there's a compelling reason to uh, consider switching them up. It definitely gives you some more mobility. Yep, uh, thanks for coming, Asari, and thanks everybody else for coming. It's been good. I'll be doing this again, hopefully soon. Follow to find out when.